Hey guys, it's Vibs here from SlideNerd. In the previous video, I showed you how to build this fancy navigation view with a custom header and items being displayed in the form of menu items with icons. In this video, let's take a look at more finer details like how to handle clicks from these items, how to group these items together and so on. Before I start, there are two things that I would like to point out. One, if you go to Google and if you type SlideNerd Udemy here, you will find my link right in the first place where I'll be adding stuff on how to make apps for Android, iOS, and other mobile platforms out there. Second, if you go to my channel SlideNerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the videos in this playlist called Material Design Tutorial. So be sure to check these two things out. Let's get started now. The first thing that I would like to do is create groups of items together. To do that, let's go back to Android Studio. Let's jump to our file which is menu underscore drawer dot xml inside this file all i have to do is use a tag called group an important attribute of this tag group is this one which says android checkable behavior select that and notice it lets you either select a single item or all the items in that group or none let's keep it single for now and just close the group now add whatever items you want inside this group within the tags of the group out there the same way let's add the other items into some other groups as well let's replicate this process so there we got our three groups and five items distributed amongst these three groups let's try to add an id for each group otherwise you won't see these groups on the screen so there we have our three groups with their own ids now when you run the app this is what you see when you start your navigation drawer you have these groups being automatically created for you guys just with four or five lines of extra code wouldn't it be awesome if we can create items like these where we have sections and items under them also we want to color these icons to the accent color that is being used by the app currently let's take a look at how we can do these two things to color the icons we can go to the activity underscore main dot xml and from there we use the attribute which is called app item icon tint here i'll simply pass the color that we created earlier which would be color accent in our case also i can change the text color by doing the same thing where i can say item text color and I can make it color text secondary. So there I have the two attributes and created here in XML. Let's go back and add the groups to so menu underscore drawer file. We're going to take this file and we're going to have items under the first item. To do that, we need to go here and remove this closing tag, make it separate and then add the two items under this, not directly, but inside a menu tag. Open the menu tag, close it and add the two items inside it. We can do the same thing to add the fifth item under the fourth one. We can just remove this closing tag and add menu tags here and let's repeat the process. So now when you're on the app and if you open the navigation drawer, this is what you see. Isn't that nice? We have our accent color right here on the icons and we have the sections out here with headers where we can have items classified under them. Now let's talk about how we can handle clicks from the navigation drawer. For that we need to implement navigation view dot on navigation item selected listener just hit alt enter or option return on your keyboard and implement the methods so the method that we see here is called on navigation item selected which is called every time you select an item let's click ok here and see what we can do with this coming back to menu underscore drawer dot xml i have kept the default items without any groups which i had at the beginning of this video if you take a look at the other combinations where i created groups and i created subheaders these items are added below in the code as comments just that you guys can refer to them if you need it so let's go back to main activity and go to this method on navigation item selected here we can try to see which item was selected by the user by having a simple if else condition we already have the menu item that is given to us let's try to get its id and compare so there's my if condition for checking if item 2 or item 3 is selected based on this i'm going to start a new activity which i have already made here on the left side there you go there's second activity and third activity let's try to make an intent that can launch these two activities so there's my code for initializing the intents according to the activity which we want to launch and then simply call start activity before you're on the app don't forget to call set navigation item selected listener on your navigation view object to tell it that this activity is the one who is going to handle the click events let's go to the bottom and try to do some more stuff before launching the other activity we would like to close our drawer the way we do that is to say m drawer layout dot close drawer here we can pass this attribute which would be gravity compact dot start 
to indicate that close the drawer which is at the beginning so once done let's run the app and find out whether this works so there we got our app running when you open the drawer this time by clicking on it item one nothing happens item two and bam take a look at that there's our second activity getting launched click back here and the drawer is closed if you open the drawer once again select item 3 and the other activity is launched out there in fact it launched the same activity two times and that is because i did not change the third activity dot class here in the intent once you do this change you should be able to see things work perfectly currently if you run the app if you go to the drawer select item 2 it starts second activity if you go back and if you rotate the screen it remembers nothing about the user's previous choice we want to change this we want to make the app smarter we want to make sure that it remembers what the user clicked the last time inside the drawer to do that let's take a look at what can be done in the first step i have a simple integer here that is going to remember the id that the user clicked the very first time whenever the user clicks on some navigation item i'm going to make that item checked by saying menu item dot set checked true i'm also going to remember that item by simply saying m selected id equals to menu item dot get id so once i have completed these two steps when the app is going to be rotated you remember very well the on save instance state method gets called in this method i want to save our id to do that i'm going to say out state dot put int and i'm going to save the id over here so i have made a key here which is selected underscore item underscore id i haven't created it we can easily create that by saying alt enter or option return create the constant field and call it selected underscore item underscore id so inside my on create method now i need to get the value of that id i'll simply say m selected id here i need to determine whether the app is starting for the first time or is it coming back after a rotation it's very simple to do that i can say saved instance state equals equals null it means it's the very first time the app is starting in that case keep it as the first item that we have if it's not the first time and the app is coming back from a rotation in that case get the value from the saved instance state that we stored back then by saying saved instance state dot get int and pass the selected underscore item underscore id which is the key which we just created at the top while saving the value so once I know what ID has been selected in the onCreate method, I will simply navigate to that ID by making a method here, say navigate and pass the selected ID. Now there is no such method currently. Let's create that by saying alt enter or option return and create the method called navigate. Inside this method, I'm going to move a lot of code that I earlier had in the on navigation item selected method over here. Right, right now it's pretty clumsy here as you can see there's a lot of repetition going on with the start activity and the intent creation. Let's move all this code right there to the navigate method. I don't need any return statements inside the navigate method. I will let the on navigation item selected return true from here. At the same time I will call the navigate method from within the on navigation item selected and pass the selected ID. So now when I run the app let's go to the drawer here and select the item number two which is going to start second activity if i hit back here and if i try to rotate the screen immediately notice that it once again starts second activity because it remembers what the user selected the last time there is one more thing that we would like to fix right now if you start the app and if you hit back the drawer and the app both are going to close we don't want that rather we want only the drawer to close to do that you're going to use this method which is on back pressed in the activity which is called by default whenever the activity's back button gets pressed here we are going to customize stuff to match our needs we are going to check if the drawer is open by saying m drawer layout dot is drawer open here we can pass the gravity which would be gravity compact dot start if the drawer is open just close the drawer otherwise carry on the default behavior we can do that by saying super dot on back pressed over here for the default behavior and for the drawer closing part we can go inside the if condition and say m drawer layout dot close drawer one more thing that we would like to fix is to show the drawer if the user has never seen it before to do that we are going to make a boolean variable at the top and call it user saw drawer in fact rename it to m user saw drawer as per the conventions we are going to have an if else condition and we are going to use some shared preferences to save the data the idea is simple if the user has seen the drawer then don't show the drawer if the user has never seen the drawer then show the drawer and then save the state 
that the user has completed the drawer. So here's my boolean method called did user see drawer. Here I'm going to construct an object of the shared preferences because I'm going to need them. And using the shared preferences object, I can check whether there is already a boolean variable that has been stored inside the shared preferences by saying get boolean. Use the key as something I have made at the top, which would be first underscore time. So by default, I'm going to give the value as false, which means the user has not seen the drawer. And I'm going to initialize or assign this variable to our instance variable that we made at the top, which was m user saw drawer right here. So this method simply returns whether the user saw the drawer or not. By default, it is assumed that the user has not seen the drawer so that we can show the drawer when needed. So inside our onCreate method, all we have to do is write an if else condition now to check this in progress. I've also created two other methods here. One is called show drawer and the other one is called hide drawer to show and hide the drawer respectively. So if the user has not seen the drawer, I will simply call show drawer here. If the user has seen the drawer, I will call hide drawer over here. Now, when the drawer is shown, we need to mark it as shown to the user. So let's make another method called mark drawer as shown. Inside this method, I'm just going to update the shared preferences saying that the user has now seen the drawer. So to do that, I will simply say shared preferences dot edit dot put boolean. In other words, use the same key, which is first time and pass the value of m user saw drawer. Now, of course, we need to update the value of m user saw drawer here by saying m user saw drawer is true. And then we can save the value by saying apply or commit at the end. So the user has never seen the drawer before, show the drawer and mark the drawer as shown to the user by saying mark drawer scene. Let's take a look at this in effect in the code now. So there's our app starting for the very first time and as you can see the navigation drawer pops open. If I head back here you can see the drawer minimizes. Once again I click back and I go back to our app which would be nav demo and take a look at that. This time the drawer is not shown because the user has already seen it and that was our technique of using shared preferences to do all the hard stuff. So when I press back once the drawer goes. I click back again the app disappears. Let's remove the recent list of apps and try to see if we can see the drawer again. Go back to nav demo and take a look at that the drawer is not seen even if you rotate the screen it makes no difference the only way you can see the drawer by default again is to go back to settings and clear the data of your app so let's go to the app section take the navigation view demo and say clear data over here once done let's again try to start the app by going to nav demo and this time you will see the drawer once again so that means our shared preferences system is working perfectly and that completes our current video you can go to google and type slide nerd udemy you can find our courses out there slide nerd facebook and slide nerd twitter on google once again to find our social networks and the code for this video and the rest of the videos is out there if you go to google and type slide nerd github in the meantime stay tuned and thanks for watching